What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Bald and Bearded channel. This is episode number five of my ultimate walkthrough guide for Bloodborne. So we're here at the Hunter's Dream and we're going to make our way to Hemwick Charnel Lane. Now we haven't discovered this area yet. So what we're going to do is go to the Cathedral Ward. Okay, so once we land here, we're just going to go straight out the front. Or the back. Whichever way you want to think of it. We're not going to fight any enemies here. We're just trying to make our way through. We'll have some guys approach us. Now this gate should be open for you. We opened it at the end of last episode. We're not concerned about getting any loot or anything like that. We're going to leave that there. We're just making our way through here. We will return to this zone at another time. When you get to the top of that stair, you're going to... Head to the left. And we'll go ahead and grab this gear here. Anything from this point on, I'm going to consider part of this episode. For the simplicity of knowing what I've looted and what I haven't, I decided not to loot the items that we ran past because we're still going to come through this area again and clear out the rest of the uh, that zone. So I needed a way to... Help recognize what all we've accomplished. So seeing that I'm leaving loot there will give me a better idea to rehash that zone. Alright. So, we're going to see a dog here. This is normal. Whenever you approach it, it's going to be walking away from you. The best thing that you can do here is just to wait until it turns back around. And then we're going to go closer to the edge to try to get it to notice us. We can use a pebble, but it's totally unnecessary. You'll eventually get close enough to it that it'll approach and attack you. There are lots of hunters in here, riflemen specifically. So there's a lot to the right, so our plan is to move to the left to start with. You can see one of the guys kind of to the left of that tree in the center screen there. So our objective to start with is to clear out the enemies on the left portion and to get to the lantern just in the entrance of Hemwick Charnel Lane. That way, if we do die in this area, we don't have to run back from the Cathedral Ward. So let's go ahead and get ready to fight this guy here. The theme for this episode is going to be patience. It's, it's really important. If you've followed the, uh, the path that we've taken thus far, and you've got the same stats and the same strength of weapon, it's going to take three hits to kill most of these dogs. So be aware of that, because it's going to look like they're very, very low health. So stay diligent in that. If you want to bump up your um, your strength by one, you can go ahead and do that, and that'll probably make these dogs two shot kills instead of three. So you might you might want to do that if you're having a little bit of trouble. All right, so you can sneak up on this guy slow, like if you want. I don't really care too much to, to do that because we can kill him in two hits. All right, so once that guy starts shooting at you, you want to get to the other side of this tree and fight the dog by itself. The dogs are tough. They've got a lot of mobility. Okay. So what we're going to do now is approach this enemy here. He's got a dog with him. If you get lucky, they'll line up like that, and that's great. It's not always going to be that way. Sometimes the dog will split around the gravestone. But you got to use these trees and these gravestones to your advantage. That's what it's here for. It's not helping the enemy, that's for sure, because a lot of their projectiles will hit these if you use the line of sight to your advantage. So You're going to see more enemies that way. All we're doing right now is headed down this passageway. So stay to the left. There's going to be a roaming party here. I'm going to suggest extending your weapon. The focus should be the dogs primarily. If you get the jump on the dogs, it's a lot easier to work with. If you let the dogs live by attacking the, the hunter first, as you can tell when we're fighting the dogs... They've got extreme mobility, so they're really tough to gauge on where they're going to be. And you never want to fight more than one at the same time. So basically, zerging that 
right there is probably the best move. Um, you can definitely use a Molotov, as I explained last episode. I typically don't do that because I want to save them for areas where I really, really struggle. All right, so we're not going to rest at the lamppost. What we're going to do is just uh, basically ignite it. Light it up. You'll hear some some sounds down that way. This is where we'll spend most of our time this episode, but we're going to go back and clear this area out behind us first. That's why we don't want to rest or travel to the Hunter's Dream, because we just did some good work clearing out some of these enemies, and we're going to make this a lot easier on ourselves going forward. So there's going to be a lot of upgrade materials in these zones that we're doing today, so... At the end of the episode, we should probably have our axe to plus five at least. And uh, we'll be able to invest heavily in the strength stat since we'll cap out our endurance at 20. So I'm not going to suggest going crazy looting the area until you kill all the enemies. So we've got this guy here. And then we've got dudes off in the distance. And then we've got the dude in the very center of the screen. He's kind of hard to see, but he's there. So, I'm going to suggest killing this guy and then retreating. So, we'll get back. And now, we'll let him lose interest in us. He's going to either stop shooting. Sometimes, he'll turn around and start headed, the, headed towards the other hunters there. So, what I'm going to suggest is taking him out by himself. He might aggro the other hunters and that's fine. As long as you don't aggro that big pile of them at the end. All right, so we got we got two moving forward and that's good. We want to separate enemies like that. Also, they blew up those uh oh, this is perfect. So here we can go ahead and get a Molotov off. So they blew up those pots there. Which is perfect for us. If you had the Molotov equipped already... Oh, shit. <laughs> there's there's a standard dumbass play right there. Okay. Let's get back to the gun. Well, no more Molotov for me. This is still going to work out perfectly for us. This is not a zone where you want to mess around with health-wise. Because those rifles can kill you in about two hits. So we got one guy with his back to us. Separate. Separated. And the other three are looking in the same direction. So we can get a good sneak kill here. Like I said, utilize this terrain to your advantage. Now, we can get the elongated axe, and it's going to allow us to do some pretty good sweeping damage. So I'm going to suggest R2 attacks. You can see, the enemy is not smart. I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. I totally miss hit. And I'm pressing the wrong buttons. See, this is what happens when you jump back and forth between games like Dark Souls and this game. Because the, the button commands are so drastically different. There we go. Alright. Enough of amateur hour. Let's go ahead and start grabbing this loot here. So, some of these items might be new to you. Specifically... I believe it's the bone marrow. Let's find it here. The bone marrow ash. Additional medium that strengthens quicksilver bullets. According to the workshop, this is a special bone marrow ash collected from Hemwick Charnel Lane. Invaluable to hunters with weak blood tinge who require the use of stronger firearms. And like I said, those firearms can kill you in about two hits. That's what's making them so powerful. These guys are souped up. So... Don't take it for granted just because of the damage you're used to those enemies doing. It's going to be even more powerful in this area. 
And it's kind of cool that they have this because a lot of times I get frustrated fighting enemies and I'm like, hey, you know, this guy is a certain difficulty in one area and then all of a sudden the same enemy is so much stronger in another. It doesn't make sense just because logistically they're somewhere else that the enemy is all of a sudden so much more powerful. They kind of put put those kind of frustrations or curiosities to rest with items like that. So I, I do appreciate that. That's pretty cool. Alright, so you're going to want to kind of weave your way in and out of the tombstones to find any loot that you left behind. Not just any um, permanent loot that's here, but loot that was left by killed enemies. Because there are a lot of them. Obviously, we can clean up pretty well on the bullets here. And let's just do a quick sweep over here. Usually the loot is pretty easy to see because it's so uh, bright and it's such a contrast to the rest of the color scheme in these zones. Bloodborne is extremely dark. Very similar color palettes in each zone. Just dark, gray, reds, stuff like that. So the loot items always stand out very much so. Okay. Let's go ahead and head into Hemwick Charnel Lane now. Now, there's no reason not to return to the Hunter's Dream if you want to power up your guy. Like, like I said, if you want to bump up your strength, if you want to refresh your materials, anything you need to do, you can go ahead and take care of that now. What I'm going to warn you is, and I don't think any of you are going to be in this situation, but if you happen to have 15 insight, you're going to make this place a lot more difficult. There's some special enemies that will appear if you have that much insight. And I'm just telling you right now, if this is your first run through of the game, you don't want to do that. If you're in your second or third playthrough, it's probably a good idea to have that much insight. So you can start seeing what is different about certain zones when you go into them. It gives you a lot of incentive for replayability. So you can play through new game plus or just a new campaign altogether with a lot of insight so you can get and he you can see and hear all the differences in zones with that. So keep that in mind. All right. What we're going to do is we want to kill the uh, spinning one with the torch first. Because the one that's kneeled down, they take a while to attack us. If we attack them first, the one that's doing a little pirouette in the background is going to go after us really hard. So... We want to make sure that we deal with them. As you can see, they come right at us. So what I want you guys to know about these enemies is that we can stagger them just by bumping into them. A lot of the times you're going to run out of stamina to swing your weapon. And you can just literally just jump into them and you'll knock them out of their attack. So it's a good way to disrupt whatever they're doing if they're going to hurt you. Or if you're just trying to evade and get away, you can roll through that and they won't hit you. So... Next, what we want to do is uh, just approach. You can use the pebble if you want. We've been over this before. When you attack an enemy after they miss an attack, they're more vulnerable. You can do more damage. So don't forget that as you go through episodes and I'm not reminding you constantly about some of these mechanics. Try to remember that you've got things that you can take advantage of. So it's kind of like the counterplay to being ultra aggressive. If you're going to play more of a defensive style, then taking advantage of those moments where the enemy is open and you can increase your damage is definitely a way that you want to do it. All right, so um, let's go ahead and circle around, kill the, kill the one enemy with the hot weapon over here. Hot weapon. There should be one more enemy. I think they're by the, um, the guillotine. Let's see, where are they? Do I just not see them? Are they sitting down somewhere? Hmm. I'm about to get spooked, I know it. 
In order to loot this item, you have to be like pressed right up against this. I don't think we can loot it in any other position. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so. Yeah, it, it just like doesn't show up all the time. It's really weird. Oh, there they are. Okay. Maybe it's maybe it's prompt on the loot. Let me go ahead and show you what I was talking about about interrupting the enemy. We just bump into them and they and they go out of their attacks. It's pretty nice. So it's a good way to chain up a combo attack with them. I'm not going to suggest you do this in a lot of instances. Um, even though we can get away with it with these enemies, I don't think it's a habit that you really want to form. But it's good to know in, in the event of a hectic situation. Alright, so make sure you grab all the loot around this area here. And it's pretty cool if you take time to look at these zones. They've got some really interesting designs, and I know a lot of the time we're really focused on enemies and all the colors and palettes and stuff is so similar, so it's hard to notice certain things, but if you take a look vertically, you're going to see a lot of things that you probably haven't noticed before, and uh, it definitely looks pretty badass if you take the time to appreciate the scenario, or the uh, sceneries here. Alright, so you can communicate with this person, it's just a little bit of lore background. <laughs> All right, grab this loot here. I'm just going to show you this is the bottom end of the shortcut. So there's going to be a lift coming from above. You can actually see the opening slightly there. So this is going to, we're eventually going to unlock this and it'll connect us closer to the lantern. But until then, we have to continue going forward. So, what we want to do over here is get to the top of the stairs and just wait. There's going to be a dog and a hunter. Or a villager. I guess we could call these villagers. I'm not sure what their technical name is. So the dog's going to attack us first, obviously, because it's got that speed. But we don't want to move off the stairs. Because there's a Molotov throwing enemy behind us. It's also good to fight on the stairs because it's a narrow area for the dog and it doesn't have as much boatability like this. You can see the enemy is open there, like I said. The enemy is open after they miss an attack, so you can take advantage of that and deal more damage. I was trying to get behind them thinking I was playing Dark Souls again and was going to deal a critical R1 backstab. <laughs> I swear to God, I know what I'm doing, but sometimes the the uh, like the reactions that are built into my DNA from playing so much Dark Souls puts me in those positions. So now we can see this enemy here and if if we would have looked up there while we were waiting for the dog, we would not have seen them. So they they actually engage regardless if they see you or not. They just know you're there because of the combat going on down below. So what we do is we're just going to move through here. Killed them. And I would suggest bumping into them and bouncing out. Sometimes you can get them to, to fall down. And that's what you really want to happen. But wherever that other enemy goes, just split the direction. That way we can charge up and kill them. Your priority is to kill the uh, ranged enemy. Now we can deal with the next one very easily. All right, sweet. So you're going to notice that we're building up quite a surplus of cold blood or just blood echoes in general to consume for later times. Again, I'll reiterate this. I like to hold on to them until I absolutely need them, but use yours if you need to. But keep in mind that it might separate our levels and our upgrades quite significantly so I would say try to keep along as much as you can with me and the power scheme that I've got if you can get away with it because the way I'm approaching 
like the timeline of where we're going and what we're doing is based off of the areas and how difficult they should be compared to where our character is level wise and strength so if you're just trying to like maximize your character level and your gear as as quickly as possible it's going to change the way that you might want to approach certain levels so i would say if you're watching the guide just kind of stick to what i'm doing but if you're if you're you know a veteran of this of this game and you just watch the guide for more information you know obviously do what you got to do so here we go we're going to run up here that's why we kill that minion the big boy so we can deal with this person Again, the reason that I'm going to try to push a ranged enemy down to, f like, flat ground, I don't ever want to fight them off an edge, because you can see I rarely do target an enemy. I hate camera lock. It's just really bad, in my opinion. So if you can get, if you can get good at a game without using that camera lock, you're going to be much better for it. But because of things like that, you might swing and fall off a ledge like that. And then the enemy can just throw Molotovs at you from above. So if we can mitigate that by bumping them to the bottom floor, we can also get like a plunging attack. We can have the high ground to use as a shield for projectiles. There's a lot of incentive to get the enemy below you. Um, so we did grab the loot over here. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Instead of going down the stairs, we're going to walk on this ledge here, and we're going to get a drop-down attack for an enemy that's going to try to get the advantage of, on us. Okay. Now, this area is going to have a lot of crows. So, good thing for us, this one is semi-aggressive to start with. Because... It tells us that they're in the area. Normally the crows are really well hidden, especially in this tall grass. If that crow wasn't right there revealing itself willingly, they would probably scare the shit out of you. You'd be walking through here. Like, I still don't see any. Now I see one, and I already know they're here, so that's how well they're hidden. Like, if you weren't looking for crows already, you would never see these guys. They would just pop out and scare the shit out of you. So the black feathers definitely give it away. But this one looks dead to me, you know what I mean? Didn't even wake up for some reason. Let's try that again. Now it's awake. <laughs> um, some of them you can't target, which is weird. Like that one I couldn't target, and that's why we missed the first jump. So I had to readjust. But these guys, you know, obviously they're awake. Um, I'm not going to do the jumping attack on this because there's so many of them. So what I'm going to do is just spam in here. There we go. Okay, sorry about that jump. I had to take a phone call real quick. So we've got the bridge here to go or the shortcut. We'll go ahead and unlock the shortcut. This takes us back to that area that I showed you a moment ago. There's the house with the lantern. And, of course, that leads us close to our lamp post. So there are enemies in this area that try to push you over ledges. So anytime you get to a cliffside or a ledge of any kind, just take a look at it first. Because if you walk through there without knowing that they're there, they're going to definitely push you off. Alright, now we've got the big boy on the other side of the bridge. I'm going to suggest trying to fight him as close to the bridge as possible. We're only going to parry this enemy. We're not going to do too much with him. So there's, a, there's another person inside the barn that's going to come at us. So I want to get the attention of this enemy. Okay, that didn't work at all. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, so we're back here at the spot where we just died. Um, as you can see, I didn't have to kill anything to get back here. And this lady's got our soul, or blood echoes. What am I doing? Alright, let's just kill her. I don't know what's going on. I'm having some brain farts right now. Alright. I literally pressed, pressed L1 when she came at me to try to parry. It's out of my mind. I was really just confused as to how she acquired my blood echoes when she was dead before I got killed. Like, that's a little odd. But, let's get this bad boy for round two. Come on, brick boy. It's kind of mad. Hey, what do you know? It works. And just move forward, get a power up attack. No, don't fall. I oh, got him. Got him. All right. So, we're going to have the person come out of the barn area. There they are. Just wait for them. That was sneaky. Normally they walk out of here. But let's just go ahead and get them. Now there's a person right behind them. They're just sitting there. So we can get the kill on them pretty easy too. So normally if we killed her outside of the barn, we would come in and there would be an enemy sitting down here. Get the jump on them. Very easy kill. It's going to be a dog at the very end of this barn here coming down the hallway. You can use these little side kennel areas to get some cover. Sometimes, like, if the dog... If you're about here by the time the dog starts at you, just roll over here. You can attack the dog through this. You can see it's not blocking my swings. My swings are getting through there. So, but you can use this... If you step all the way back, the dog can't attack you from this side. So, it's basically a free kill if you need to do that. You can hear there's a wheelchair above. You can't see it, but it's definitely audible. Um, you might not be able to hear it in my replay, but you'll definitely hear it in yours. Alright, so let's climb to the top. We're going to run to the end here so we can kill this guy. If, uh, unbelievable, the hardest enemies in all of Dark Souls and FromSoft games, these fucking little bastards. I hate them because they put them so low to the ground that you're going to miss so often. It's really frustrating. And they're actually not as hard to kill in this game. I am shame. I am shame. Uh, like... Some of the other games from FromSoft in the past, you can uh, reload and you'll be able to kill them. So we're going to do that in a second. We're just running across this and go to the right here. Here's the wheelchair guy. We'll go ahead and pick up this item off the ledge here. Alright, so once we get to... Oh, and let me remind you guys. Wait, where's my lantern? Let's see. Did I not buy? Yeah, I did. Okay. This is why we have the hand lantern. And I've just been painfully going through in darkness. But, yeah. This is why you put this on your belt so you don't have to hold the torch in your left hand. Obviously, the torch gives you more light. But the, lan the hand lantern on your waist is way worth it it's way worth it it extinguishes anytime you die so all you'll have to do is either go to your personal effects or if you've got it on your quick action menu and just basically turn it back on at that point uh, of course i leave it on the personal effects because it's not ever something that we're going to need to just have to cycle through like our pebbles or cocktails or anything like that all right so what i'm going to do is get back a little bit and we're going to reload so I can try to get the kill on the nightmare creature. Okay. Let's see. There it is. There 
There we go. Yeah, and my initial mistake when we first approached it is I was running. Oftentimes when you're running, you're going to miss your swing. It's just the momentum takes you too far. And uh, it's not really a flaw in the game design. It's more of I know better than that. But you know, I had to bitch and moan about it. All right, so once we're out here, we don't really, we're not in too much danger. If you, as long as you stay to the left of the buildings and move pretty methodically, we're going to get the first sight of enemy. So let them come to us. Again, like I said, if we move too fast, they're probably going to end up trying to push you off the edge. And that's an insta kill. So, if they've got some shiny loot, don't follow, because that's what happens to you. Don't do it, man. It's not worth it. All right. You can see there's some nice shiny loot on that very edge down there, and that's definitely something that we want. But we're going to have to take our sweet time to get it. If we get an opportunity to pull the enemy with the pebble, that's what we want to do. Again, if you land a visceral attack, you're going to recover all that health that you would have lost in that engage. So it's definitely worth it to try to trade a hit there. Obviously, if you, if you perform it properly, you won't end up needing to trade. Well, he should have died there. That's bad news for us. I kill him first. See the roll there, how it interrupted her attack? That's when you're going to take advantage of that kind of thing. All right. Give me that. So if... If we look down below, this is an opportunity to use a Molotov if you need to. Often the dogs aren't going to be grouped up. You can see they're roaming. So we're not really going to try to kill them with the Molotov. But what we want to do is kill this grouping right here. We can keep most of these engaged separate. But I would suggest trying to utilize this as an option to keep this a more level playing field in case you need to escape in this direction when you're down below later. You can see those dogs eventually kind of cross paths there. But I'm not sure if you'll be able to take them out with Molotov. I don't even know if we're going to take both of these guys out with this Molotov. I don't know if we can do enough damage with it. What I'm going to try to do is go ahead and place an oil urn there. And we're just going to get a little bit greedy and try to get two fires. All right. Well, at least at least we took out the Molotov thrower. I would have preferred the dog, but something is better than nothing. And it looked like we really did need that oil earn because we did just about enough damage to take them out in that situation all right i'm gonna go ahead and put on the pebbles i typically don't want the urn because sometimes i make fat finger or just lapse of judgment button presses and it'll piss me off to accidentally throw a molotov so let's get this one come on Again, trades in any situation where you can land a visceral attack is almost always going to be worth it. It's rare that something's going to damage you more than you can regain. So we've got the one with our, with our back to us and then the dog. So definitely want the dog first. Okay. And it's very nice that the tree is in front of us. So in between throws, just go ahead and get them. Be careful there. You saw the momentum almost took me over the edge. You don't want that. It's not like the worst thing ever. But you'll see down here, thankfully, nothing roams. Like right below us, if you do happen to fall, nothing roams. 
but there are two executioners down here they're stationary right now but they're going to start roaming in a moment and then the dogs that we were just looking at so there should be four or five dogs still down there there's going to be a lady to the right of this opening here so you can just walk in and deal with her if you want or just miss everything both options extremely lucrative <laughs> all right nothing here don't worry about this nothing nothing to be afeard of so now they start patrolling so what we want to do first is just go to the left all we're concerned about is getting this contraption open here this gives us the best shortcut to where we are now So what we're going to do is try to separate these guys. Hello, buddy. That's not good. We really only need to land one crit on this guy. That's perfect. Now we'll be able to follow it up with some quick attacks. Good upgrade. Go ahead and utilize some heals. Get this next one. Charge up a power attack is probably the best timing wise to make sure that you get the kill. As you can see, the last one we, we fought, I swung a little bit early with my first swing, and that could have cost us pretty, pretty significantly. All right. We can drag these dogs out and then use this centerpiece here as a mechanism to help defend ourselves. So let's try to get one. All right. Let's get the one with its back to us. Oh, shit. <laughs> Alright. When we draw, like, the whole party like that, that's not a good time. So, we're gonna try to backtrack a little bit here. If we can bottleneck like this, that might be okay. Let's see, we might get a good spot here. Nice... Nice from soft physics. Solid structures are never what they seem. Alright, dogs are going absolutely ape shit down there. It sounds like they're out of the building. It is not safe to drop down. But we can use this to our advantage here. Now, this is definitely not what I wanted, but this is also something that we can use to our advantage. Cool. Alright, so, you always want to have escape routes. That's one benefit of moving through your level at a pace that's not breakneck, so that you can pay attention to places that you've been and know that you can backtrack there with relative ease and have some sort of escape plan. Okay, dog. Okay. All right. I like it. You want some extra screen time? So, what I was about to say is if we successfully pulled the dog, we could use this as a bit of a blockade. As you can see here, they're not getting through this. So, this area here becomes LOS and... A nice physical barrier as well so at, when i say los if you're not familiar with that that's just an acronym for line of sight so we still have the one dog there so it looks like there were probably six in total we don't need to be too careful against this one last hound so we can just come out come on up here hit him with the double juke he really should have got hit by that one swing i don't know how that missed 
Alright. Grab these last few items here. This is the prize that we're really after. It's gonna be a rune called Lake. Just be careful. I was tippy toe up here. Ugh. Jesus Christ. Scary. Alright, and that's going to increase our physical defense by 3%. And by the end of the episode, we'll be able to start equipping these items, so... Hooray for that. It's going to make a, a big improvement on our characters. So here we can see Lake Physical Damage Reduction by 3%. Which, um, over time, just gradual every hit you take, damage reduction, that's really nice. Especially considering we don't really technically have... Armor. I mean, we have a tire, and some attire is more resilient, better at damage reduction than others, but it's not like... You're not counting on taking hits in this game. You, the only reason you take hits in this game is for regain. Anything else, you're trying to avoid damage. Trades are okay, like we've been discussing. But if you're not trading, and you're taking damage, you're probably going to die really quickly. So here we have a uh, roaming mob of three. And then we have a big executioner right there. Whichever one you decide to attack first, the other's going to join in. So if we attack him while these roaming mobs are close, that's a bad move because they're just going to swarm us. So they'll be able to drop down from above and get us from behind. So you don't want to do that. If you're going to attack the executioner first, you want to make sure that these ladies are all the way up towards the top of the hill. It's probably the best choice because we can get a visceral attack on the guy typically um, so I like to wait until they get pretty close to that I hate that that one trails so far behind so let's see what we can do here big boy whoa I, what happened what happened there? That was so weird. It like didn't... I, I'm really confused. Hold up. <laughs> Let's back out of here before... Before I let my confusion absolutely destroy me. Oh my goodness. Molotovs. Alright. They can't throw that far, so we don't need to worry about that too much. Once they get at a certain range, we're okay. So let's take this out. Okay. I'm so what was confusing me so badly about that executioner fight? Oh my god. Was the fact that my weapon All right, so he, we did a charge up attack right in his face and it did like 40 damage and then it like refused to let me swing. It was really weird. It basically my character was a sitting duck in that situation. I can't really make any sense of it, honestly. It just doesn't make sense to me. But, again, we knew how to escape that situation. So, this is why if you're going through a zone and you're not like speed running or something, you're not... Like, let's say you're not retracing footsteps because you just died. And you don't want to fight enemies. When you're going through the zone, it this is why you clear enemies out. This is why you do the painstaking process of tiptoeing around corners and making sure that you get the advantage in every fight. Because when shit goes wrong, if you haven't already taken those steps, you don't have those places to run back to. You know, I could backtrack that whole way without feeling any threat behind me because I know it's 100% safe. And that's a huge advantage in the game. So, knowing your surroundings is probably the best weapon that you could really have. Alright, so... We're gonna go in here, and when we destroy these three barrels, there's gonna be a nightmare creature that drops down. So make sure you get on that real quick. Like I said, we pick up lots of upgrade materials. Um, we won't need them for the next fight. We're about to fight the witch's boss fight. Um, it's not really necessary to be 
any more powerful than we are right now. You can do more damage with like a fire weapon. Um, the fight is not not too tough. So don't get too concerned with that. Uh, I'm going to actually put on... Let's see. Do I want to put anything on? Probably not. I'm just going to do this bare bones. So I'll try to explain what's going to happen. When we go through and we get into this boss fight, there's going to be what seems like the enemy that you want to attack. It's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to be this skinny, dark wraith looking creature. Um, they're very slow unless you're close to it and also moving fast. They're kind of, they're basically blind. So they follow you based off of sound. If you move around, like if you're walking, you'll notice that they're not going to do much to you. The minute you start running or dealing a lot of damage, that's when they run to you. We're really fighting an invisible opponent, which are these witch creatures. And there's two of them. There's, um... So ideally, if you can kill both of them close together, that's the perfect result because one will revive the other if you kill them before. So it's kind of luck how it'll work out. You can usually see where the witch is going to show up and they start casting spells at you that will cripple you or stun you in a sense where they can deal a lot of damage. And if it's not them that gets to you and deals a lot of damage, it's the other little enemies. So... You just want to stay on the move and constantly be aware of what their location is. You can throw a numbing mist at them to try to reveal their location once you see one. So it's a little bit easier to spot, but you don't really need to utilize any of those tricks. You can really do well in this fight. It's, you know, dying, it's okay. It's not going to mean a whole lot about like, did you do the right thing or not? It probably just meant you got a little unlucky. So initially we see the red dot here. That's going to show us one of the witches. We don't get to see the other witch's health bar until we actually discover them. So what you do is if you look off in the distance after the witch moves, you can typically see where they're at. You can land the crit attacks, which are also good because it's going to leave us... Um, it's going to prevent us from taking damage from the other enemies. All right, so what we're doing is we're just walking around, keeping our eyes out for anything. Usually if you look on the other side, you'll be able to see some kind of motion, some kind of weirdness going on. You can hear it too. If your sound is up, you can definitely hear footsteps. Okay, so we'll watch that disappear. We can hear there's one behind us. Ah, oh, shit. That was terrible. But you can see I'm, I'm walking around, and that thing has no idea where I am. Like, we're not, we're not running around making a shit ton of noise. So that guy right there, he's not very interested in us. And that's how you keep yourself safe for the most part. There's only going to be one of him for the first phase. Let's find us a witch. All right. She's moving backwards. That's a bad idea. All right. I should have been able to crit that. That was weird. Oh, shit. You don't want to be in front of them. That's the last thing you want to do. Alright, so this is what we're looking for right here. And we did see that one over here as well. Oh, they already moved. So if you happen to... All right, so we got a second second spoop in the house. If you happen to find the other witch, 
It definitely helps along the fight, but they'll for sure show up after you kill this one. Oh, that's bullshit right there. So you definitely don't want to get hit by that crap. All right, let's clear out. Whenever those, um, I don't know what we're going to call them, are close by, you just want to go ahead and exit the area. So you can see the one witch is dead, but eventually it's going to get revived. So you can see she's coming close towards it. So what I want to do is, is try to circle behind. Fuck. Like I said, those enemies are really no threat if you're not running around. I don't really care that the other witch is alive. The only thing that's dangerous is landing those... Landing those stun attacks, like those orbs right there. So you see how they're drawn to quick movements? So I'm walking and it's walking. I can move even slower and it would be really disinterested. Oh, come on. The one thing you can't afford to do is get caught by their melee grab. See, that, that pisses me off that that hits. It's good that all the spoops are standing next to each other. Let's find the easy one. Okay. The spell obviously gives its location away. The, the only reason this fight gets drawn out is because you're basically... Ah! You're forced to move slowly. See how they don't attack? Like that. I like that. I like that. funny little glitch see if I can trick this dude <laughs> slow walk he just goes the other way come on now I just can't stand this shit dude she's like the slowest thing ever just camera lock is so bad oh so you can always... Oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. Oh! Alright, now we're just gonna speed around. There they are. I'm coming to kill. I don't care. Oh, the other one revived already? Come on. What? 
All right, let's keep our eyes out. I think, I think it appeared all the way in the left corner. Probably did. Yep, I knew it. Bullshit. I want to see if this guy attacks me without me moving. Yep, it will. Uh, I was trying to get a charge off. This fight really sucks, if you didn't notice. It's just the same thing over and over again if you don't kill the other one fast enough. So we gotta find it. Come on! This is so annoying. You can see how little damage we do with that standard attack, so that's why I keep going for the crit. There we go. This is gonna work. Finally. So once you kill... Once you kill both of them, then those guys will die. They're just gonna walk around for a minute and then die. Okay. Sorry about how long that took. I was basically trying to instruct at the same time and it makes me go a lot slower. What on earth? Alright, we got some serious... I think that's connected to my insight level maybe? Where I was standing? Because we just got the increased insight and all of a sudden that sound was going crazy. But yeah. Annoying fight. Easy fight obviously. You want to stay close to full health. But the only time you're really going to take damage is from that um, explosion that they do. And that's if you're in close range and missed your charge up. Because as you can see, almost every time it missed, I was target locked on it. And the thing is literally crawling around. So the fact that you miss, you miss a target locked enemy that's moving as slow as possible just shows you how stupid target lock is it's it's absolutely frustrating as shit it's such a poor design i can't stand it so like i said if you can get away with not using target lock go for it and an instance where you have to land uh, a backstab type stun and it's only done by hitting you know like channeling a power attack like this there is like you can't really aim these attacks like, you can see, it's just whatever way you're pointed is the way it's gonna go. And it's really hard to land this kind of attack on anything that's moving at all. Like, it has to be completely stationary. For you. That's why the sneak attacks are the channeled up attacks. That's why these are powerful, because the enemy is not moving. But if it's moving, you have to use the target lock. And even the target lock misses so frequently. So it's like, it's kind of pointless. Just pretty pointless. You can tell how annoyed I am with target lock and why I never use it. Pisses me off. All right. So, we've got a lot going on here. We just picked up the tool that's going to allow us to equip the runes. So, let's do our weapon upgrades and our rune equip before we do anything else cuz those take priority. So, we're going to do the Improved blood vial number, equipped, same with the silver bullets, and then the lake. These blue runes are special oath memories. We can't, we can't equip that at the moment. We need to get one, so we don't have any of those, but eventually we will. This one we're probably not going to use. I don't think we're going to do too much beast transformation or anything like that, but of course you have it if that's suiting uh, your style, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. So, we'll be able to see the advantage of those runes once we actually rest and travel somewhere else. We did get some new blood gems. Um, if you can fortify your weapon up to level 6, we'll be able to have our next blood gem equipped. So you can see there, the next upgrade will get that next uh, blood gem availability. So... 
I'm not gonna like we've got this at plus five we could of course bump up the rifle spear or anything else I don't want to do that at the moment because I want to get the hunter's axe as upgraded as I can and we should be able to finish that off in the next episode to get it to plus six so that's the priority first and foremost of course we can also improve our left hand weapons but we can't apply runes to them not yet they have to get upgraded a certain amount so if we go to like blood gem fortification and go to the left-handed weapons that's why we don't see anything like that we don't have anything that we can utilize for that so eventually eventually of course we can visit the insight merchants here there's nothing new besides maybe this uh, small resonant bell and the bloodshot eyeballs i'm not sure i don't recall exactly when we got those available but nothing new there we didn't pick up any new badges or anything it's not necessarily any new upgrade materials this is all stuff that we had available to us at the beginning of the episode so nothing uh nothing that we necessarily care about spending our blood echoes on here but what we definitely want to do is upgrade our uh, characters attributes so what we're going to see here is we're going to get endurance all the way to 20 now we're going to start working on strength so we're going to do more damage going forward because we're now going to start focus on attributes that improve the uh damage output of our weapon because our axe scales with strength and that's what we're bumping up now so now we've got a uh, pretty good health pool we've got nice stamina pool so those two things I really wanted to take care of first and foremost because we were doing some of the easier zones so the damage output wasn't as important but now it's going to start becoming more significant so we need to increase that output so we can still keep killing enemies in two to three swings instead of four to five swings because that's going to be quite dangerous unless you're fighting one on one. All right, everybody. So that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so very much for checking it out. If you want to check me out on stream, you can do that on Twitch at bald and bearded twitch slash bald and bearded same channel name as we are here on YouTube. Love to see you guys come holler at me. Ask me any questions. I got no problem answering those or leave them in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.